Okay, so SQL, what is it? SQL is a solution to a problem. And the problem is, we've been looking at databases for a while now. The whole idea, the whole reason you use a database is because you've got lots and lots of data, right? Uh, sometimes hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of records, things that you want to describe, and lots of things that you know about the things you want to describe, right? So databases tend to be very large. Now, you think about some of the data that you use on a normal basis, like say your timetable or say um, the books in your bag, right? That's kind of like a database of sorts. When you're looking for something in that database, you're looking for something specific. What's the way you go about it? Um, well, usually you just get it out and you flick through it manually, right? For instance, you're like, okay, today's uh, Monday A. What is it, week A, right? You think, what have I got period three? So you get out your whole database and you look through the entire thing until you find the period you're looking for. You go, oh, okay, this is what room I've got to go to, right? Um, or say, your bag, you go in and you can sift through all of the books to find the one that you're after because there's not that much there, right? But that, that sort of method isn't going to work for large databases. If you've got millions of records, it simply won't do to just start looking through the entire thing. Right? You'll be there forever. Okay? So SQL is one of the solutions. We will have a look at other ones later on in other lessons. For how to solve this problem of how do I get at all of this data? There's heaps and heaps and heaps. How do I get to it? So let's start by defining SQL. And hopefully that will explain how it's a solution to this problem. Okay? SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Uh, it was designed by IBM uh, something like 40 years ago, thereabouts. Uh, it, its predecessor, by the way, uh, was structured English query language, but they subsequently made it sort of international. But because of where it came from and its old acronym, it's pronounced SQL, it's pronounced SQL, not um, not squall. Squall? Well, anyway, so uh, if, you, if you see that, uh, sometimes you'll see something I'll talk about a bit later on, a particular implementation of SQL, um, and they pronounce that MySQL, right? So anyway, what is it? Uh, well, what's a query in normal language when you talk about, I, I'd like to query you about something. Can you think of a synonym for that? Query? Question. Yeah, question. I think um, something you want to ask, you're posing a question to something to try and get some information out, right? That's the same idea here. This is not just any question though, it's a, it's a structured question, right? Hence, structured query. And language just means there's a set of defined rules that show how this works, okay? So, uh, that's what SQL means. Let me show you what one query in structured query language actually looks like, okay? So, Uh, a query in SQL has four components, okay? And you'll see how each is important to get out data from a database, okay? So, I'll put them all down and then we'll discuss them. <clears throat> all right. So here are the four pieces, okay? Uh, what are we looking at? Remember the structure of a database, right? Databases themselves are structured. That's why the queries that deal with them are also structured. Uh, databases, relational databases, are made up of tables that are made up of uh, records and fields, right? Which describe all the things in there. So select talks about, okay, which fields in this really, really large database, it might have hundreds of fields, which fields am I interested in? Okay, so for instance, you might say, I'm interested in students and their marks. Students and their marks. Okay. So I might say, um, student dot name. Okay, now, student dot name, right? Student means that's the table I'm looking at, so this is the student table, and name is the particular field in the table that I'm interested in. Okay, so that's what student dot name is referring to. I might have a few others on there, like maybe uh, student.class and so on and so on. Uh, extra things there. Maybe I'll just add that in here. And 
And of course, if you've got a relational database, you've got lots and lots of different tables there. You can select as many tables and fields as you like, maybe dozens and dozens and dozens, whatever's relevant to what you're looking for, okay? Okay, now, from, from seems kind of redundant. Uh, if you've got these uh, tables here, I'm defining what tables I'm looking for here. So in this case, it'd just be student, okay? Sometimes you'll just see name and class up here. These are the fields, right? Whereas from says which tables are you interested in. Okay, now, where? Now, this is the really important part, okay? Where means I'm querying you for data out of this database. I want specific data. I don't just want the whole lot. I want ones that meet certain conditions, okay? So, for instance, uh, just recently, or well, this presentation day coming up next week, right? Wait, no, a bit later. Well, I can't remember where it's coming up. There's a rehearsal as well. We have to select who's first in subject for every, uh, you know, every every subject that's there. So I might be looking for, say, the top three students of the class, or maybe uh, the people in the class who got a certain mark over, um, you know, say 90, okay? So what I would do is I'd say something like, where a particular field meets a particular condition, such as student dot total mark is greater than 90. See what's going on? I'm looking at a particular field and I'm applying a condition to it, right? And so this is the question I'm posing. So obviously not everyone in the database will meet this condition. So the output of this query, uh, the answer to the question, if you like, will just put, fit, give me those particular things that will meet this condition, okay? I might apply other conditions as well. I might say the student's total mark is greater than 90 um, and, um, for instance, their students, hmm, what assessments have you guys done? Let's just go for the most recent one. The term for exam is greater than 85, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm looking for both of these conditions to be met simultaneously, right? I could go student total mark or student term for exam, okay? So these are different logical operators. We'll look at those in a second. Okay, lastly, I've looked at um, which fields, I've looked at the tables, I've applied a condition. That's what where means. Okay. And lastly, I want some kind of order. Right? I don't want them placed out randomly. Uh, and databases are really good at ordering things. Right? So order, what kind of sequence am I, am I going to put these in? Again, I'll pick a field. Perhaps the results I want, um, I can put them in order of name, right? I might say by student name. And then I can choose either ascending or descending. Now, ascending, descending. Uh, how does this work? When it's numbers, ascending is easy, right? It's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? So if it's ascending, the smallest values are at the beginning and the largest ones at the end, right? Descending would be backwards. If I went by student name and I said ascending, would I be starting with the letter A or would I be starting with the letter Z? Hmm. If it's ascending, it should be A, right? Now, how can you remember? People get these confused all the time. Um, the letter A is the first letter in the alphabet, right? So it has the numerical, numerical value 1. And the letter Z, of course, is the last one. Okay? So if I'm ascending, I'm going from small to big, then I'm going from A to Z, okay? which is usually the way that we have alphabetical lists, right? So I would write A, S, C for ascending. If I wanted descending, I would say uh, D, E, S, C for descending. Okay. So there's a typical query, right? That's just one example of what it would look like. It's the whole thing all together, the black and the red parts. Um, the blue parts are just describing what's happening. Okay, so we just did one and two just now. Uh, we defined what this language is, and we described the four components of a typical query with that example. 
let's dig in a little uh, further. I was sort of alluding to this, but I didn't go into much detail about different operators and wildcards. What are operators and wildcards? Um, I'm going to delete this, and I'll show you what I mean. We'll talk about operators first. Operators are about logic. So often they, these are called logical operators. And I actually gave you an example of one before. So there are three main kinds. There's a fourth one I'll, I'll give you in a second. There's actually more than that, but these are the ones that are most commonly used. A and B, right? It means I've got two conditions. For instance, we were looking at um, a mark being greater than something and a different mark also being greater than something, right? And means I want them both fulfilled simultaneously. That makes sense? Okay. Or, of course, means I can have one or the other. Just having one is sufficient. Okay? So, just having one is enough, so it's either or. Or I can have both. Okay? Not means, well, you get what that means, right? I want to have this condition and I'm excluding this one. Okay? Uh, in other words, I want a mark to be, you know, greater than something, and I definitely want to avoid something else happening. Okay. Now, like I said, there are some other ones as well, um, and you know, for example, you might hear about NAND. Okay, I'll let you look up that one in a second. It's not that common. One that is important, though, uh, it's not as common as these three, but still relatively, is called XOR. That's quite of an important one, and. Um, People get confused out, so let me try and explain it. Okay. The X stands for exclusive. Exclusive. So you can see <clears throat> it's similar to it's similar to A or B, but what's the difference? Okay. Um, exclusive means I can only have one or the other, right? You can't have A and B. If you look at this one in here, A or B, hmm, that includes A and B. I can have both at the same time, that's fine. Okay? But A, X or B means you can have one, we can have the other, but if you have both, it doesn't fulfill that condition. Okay? Now, like I said, uh, if you go look up uh, logical operators or Boolean operators, okay, you can find a few more of them, but these are the main ones. Okay, now one more little thing before uh, I'm going to give you an exercise. Uh, wild cards. What are wild cards are about? They're a particular thing you can add into your conditions that allow your searches to be more flexible. Okay, I'll explain what I mean. This star is the first kind of wild card. What it means is any set of characters. For instance, I might want everyone in the class whose last name, whose surname starts with T. Okay? Uh, I don't know, for instance, maybe I'm looking for a student and I, re I remember their surname starts with T, but I can't remember what their surname actually is. Okay? So what I would search for, the way I would use this query is, I'd say student dot last name. Okay? And then I'd say it's equal to T star or t asterisk right uh, by the way all text conditions they have to be in quote marks okay so if it was a number i wouldn't need quote marks but because it's text i do so you can see this would return things like uh, it would return a leo tan or a connie tran because it meets these conditions and it's any set right so it can be you know a really really long name off on here okay this can be any number of characters right okay now the second wildcard is a question mark. The 
The question mark's like the asterisk, but it can only stand for one character. Okay? Single unknown character. So for instance, suppose I know I've got a student and his surname is either, oh, I don't know, it's either Chan or it's Chen, right? But I, I don't know which one. Now, it would be a really bad idea for me to use the first wildcard, the asterisk, right? Because if I went CH star, okay, I'm going to return far more results than I'm actually interested in. I won't just return Chan and Chan, I'll return um, Chong and Chu and in a school like this, this is a bad idea, right? Uh, it's going to go on and on and on. So I could do this, but it's very inefficient. Better, if I know it's that specific, right, is to say student.lastname is equal to, quote, C-H, these are the letters I know, question mark, there's the unknown, right? And I know it ends in an N. It ends in an N, okay? So that will return just Chan and Chan, and maybe, maybe Chin, I suppose, or Chan, or, yeah, you get the idea. Okay, so those are the wild cards. Now, let's come back here. 